right, welcome everyone to the uh, Dr. Cog Board of Directors Wednesday, February 17th meeting. Uh, the first item I will call to order at uh, the meeting at 6.31 p.m. Uh, the next item, roll call and introduction of new members and alternates. We will take the roll call first and I have a few announcements after. Ms. Stevens, please. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and actually, if you're okay, uh, we just wanted to wait just a few minutes to make sure that we brought um, all members over and uh, make sure that they have the ability to speak, um, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Thank you. Just one moment. Okay, um, I think we've brought over uh, as many as we can and obviously I, I'm going to perform roll and then at the end of roll I'll ask if there's uh, any, you know, directors that we didn't bring over who weren't able to state their name for roll call. So, okay, with that, um, obviously everyone just get ready to unmute yourself when your name is called. Uh, so first we have Aaron Brockett. Present. Adam Cushing. Chris Giordanelli. Allison Coombs. Present. Ashley Stolzman. Here. Bill Gipp. Connected. Perfect. Bob Pfeiffer. John Marriott. Bud Starker. Present. Claire Levy. Here. Colleen Whitlow. David Adams. David Spellman. Deborah Mulvey, Roger Hudson, Don Cognac. Deborah Mulvey's here, sorry. Oh, no problem, thank you. Uh, Don Cognac, David Whelan, George Lance, Dave Kerber. Here. George Teal. Yes, ma'am. Herb Atchison. Yes. Jacob LeBure. Uh, Dana Gutwine. Here. Jim Dale. Here. James Kumerly. Jamie Jeffrey. Jason Gray. Tim Dietz. Jeff Baker. Good evening, everyone. Jessica Sandgren. Julia Marvin. Here. Joan Peck. Here. Here. Josie Cockrell. Oh. No, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Josie Cockrell. <laughs> Lisa Jones. <clears throat> Julie Duran Mullica. Joyce Downing. Kara Tanucci. Here. Karina Elrod. Pamela Grove. Catherine Whitman. Here. Kevin Flynn. Here. Christopher Larson. Larry Vidum. Here. Linda Montoya. Celeste Arner. Linda Olson. Here. Lynette Kelsey. Here. Margot Ramston. Here. Michael Hillman. Neil Shaw. Here. Nicholas Angelo. <clears throat> uh, Holly Rogan. Nicholas Williams. Here. Nicole Frank. Present. 
Paul Sutton, Sean Foray, Rachel Binkley. Also connected. <laughs> Thank you. Randy Wheel. Glad to be here. <laughs> Randy Wheelock. Here. Ron Angles. Roy Palmer. Gail Christie. Sally Daigle. Present. Stephanie Walton. Hello. Steve Odericio. Lynn Baca. Steve Conklin. Here. Tammy Mauer. Here. Sorry, Tracy. Lynn Baca is here. Sorry to oh, interrupt. No worries. Thank you so much, Lynn. Yep. Uh, Tracy Kraft Tharp. Yes. William Lindstedt. Here. Wynn Shaw. Here. All right. Uh, and with that, we do have a quorum, and I will hand it back to our chair. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Oh, I am so sorry. I forgot one thing. <laughs> um, I was going to ask uh, if there's anyone who has not been made a panelist on the attendee side that is a board member. If you could please just raise your hand now so we can make sure you're brought over. Okay, we'll get that taken care of. Okay, and with that, uh, I want to- Oh, sorry? Bob, uh, Bob Pfeiffer just uh, entered the virtual room. Perfect, all right, awesome. Thank you, sorry about that, Mr. Chair. I'll hand it back to you. No worries, thank you very much. Um, uh, new members and alternates, uh, we have a couple. Uh, new members uh, from Adams County, Commissioner Steve Odoricio. He was an alternate prior to this meeting. He is moving up to the, the full member. And with that, uh, we have Commissioner Lynn Baca, who is uh, Mr. Odoricio's uh, alternate. Uh, we also have uh, from the City of Central, um, um, Kara Tanucci. Uh, my apologies if I mispronounced that. Uh, we also have some new alternates, um, Commissioner Matt Jones from Boulder County and uh, Town of Parker. Um, my alternate now is our new mayor, Jeff Toborg. Uh, and with that, that concludes that. We have a couple of additional announcements. Uh, with, uh, with the transference from GoToMeeting to, uh, to the Zoom uh, platform, uh, we're asking directors to, even though we can visually see them, uh, see people, please raise your virtual hand for questions and comments. Uh, or if you're on the phone, press star nine so we can, uh, we can uh, um, address your questions and comments. And with that... I will move on to item three, um, we, uh, approval of agenda. If there's anybody who would like to approve the agenda, please raise your virtual hand or press star nine. Uh, I see Commissioner Teal, please feel free to um, unmute and Mr. Flynn will concur with, with the second, I believe. In that case, Chairman, move to approve the agenda as presented. Thank you, Director Teal. Uh, Director Flynn, I saw your, your hand come up um, next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, I second that motion by uh, Director Teal. All right, uh, with, with a motion on the floor, um, I guess we're asking you to unmute so we can take a, a voice vote. And uh, most of the people are unmuted. Thank you very much. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Hi. 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 Again, <laughs> abstain. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the next item is report of the chair. We have a public hearing announcement. Uh, so uh, the script is the Denver Regional Council of Governments has scheduled two public hearings for March 17th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m., First public hearing is to receive comments on the draft 2050 Metro Vision Regional Transportation Plan and Associated Air Quality Conformity Determinations. The second public hearing is to receive comments on the draft 2022 to 2025 Transportation Improvement Program. Further information about both public hearings is available on the Dr. Cog website. So with that, um, I will um, go to the next item, report on performance and engagement committee. Director Flynn, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We neither performed nor engaged this month, so we have no report. Thank you. Thank you, Director Flynn. 
Uh, the next item, uh, report on Finance and Budget Committee. Director Conklin, please. And I was struggling to get my uh, document open so I could quote it correctly. We did have one matter of business tonight. And I would actually ask uh, Mr. Rex if you could uh, explain that briefly. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, I, I, sorry struggled. I struggled with the mute. Um, no, uh, there was one item tonight in the Finance and Budget Committee to uh, allow me to execute a contract with a consulting firm. And uh, forgive me, I can't, I don't have the name in front of me to uh, perform um, some, some marketing and, um, and, and outreach for our Vision Zero program. And that was the only action I'm um, great. Uh, thank you, Executive Director Rex. Thank you, Director Conklin. And, uh, and that company was Hill Adium. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Director Conklin. Uh, the next item, report of the Executive Director. Executive Director Rex. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. And it's so great seeing so many faces, at least visually, uh, virtually. Um, welcome to Dr. Cog Zoom. Uh, this, is, this is a new platform for us, but of course, we're all experts in when it comes to when it comes to virtual prop, uh, platforms anymore. Um, so thank you very much. It's, it's good seeing everybody again. Um, I first, I just wanted to echo Chair Dyack's announcement of, of next month's public uh, hearings on the 25th the MVRTP and the new TIP. Both those plans are available for your review on the Dr. Cog website, and I would strongly encourage you to do so. Um, the uh, 2050 RTP plan, it's, it's 180 pages or so. It's, a, it's an easy read. There's a lot of pictures and all that kind of good stuff, but we truly would like to get your, your comments and reactions to, to that plan. Um, as as uh, the chair stated, um, public hearing next month and then uh, possible action by, by, the, by the board in, uh, in the April timeframe. Um, I would like to uh, just mention a vaccination event that we took part in um, over on Saturday, February 6th. We partnered um, with uh, SCL Health um, at the National Western Complex. They reached out to us um, and were, were, um, were hoping that we could provide some support for, tr for transporting older adults to, um, to the event. So we partnered with our, our uh, service providers um, to get uh, older adults to that event. I think the event by all accounts was very successful. About 5,000 residents received vaccinations and including many older adults as I mentioned, focused it and, and the, the event was focused on underserved populations. Um, so we were, we were pleased to be, be a part of that. And a really, really big shout out to Jayla and her staff, AJ and Cassie and Travis for, for helping out and, and really coordinating that effort. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a big deal when you're when you're, you know, you, you know, especially when it comes to the vaccinations, it's not like a regular hospital trip, of course, or sorry, a regular doctor visit. Um, you know, we got to make sure that once the once the older adults go through and get their vaccination, that there's there's a, there's a ride waiting for them to take them back home. So, um, big shout out to 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 the AAA, and we're we're planning on partnering again with SCL in early March for another event that they're having, as well as other health providers have reached out to us about possible coordination. So we're excited that we can do our part and um, get our older adults vaccinated as quickly as possible. The next item I wanted to mention to you guys, and you may or may not know this, but our very own Jayla Sanchez Warren, she co-hosts a radio show which focuses on aging uh, adult health and wellness issues. Um, her co-host is a longtime radio personality, Murphy Houston, which I know anybody that's been in this community for a while is, is, is familiar with Murphy. Uh, great guy, of course. Um, and uh, so, so the program we've, we've, we've operated under the umbrella of no copay radio under that banner. And so, but our show is now moving to Cozy 101.1 FM starting um, this Sunday, February 21st. We're really, really excited. This is big news for us. Um, Cozy is consistently one of the top three adult contemporary stations in the Denver market. Um, so the show airs on Sundays at 7.30 a.m. But you can also find archive shows by visiting our website or going directly to nocopayradio.com. No copay so please be sure to tune in or, or visit our website. Um, it's, it's truly, it really is a great uh, opportunity for us to get the word out about um, the services that Dr. Cog provides as well as um, 
just general overall health and wellness issues. So, so Jayla, she even, I, I know she even has groupies. She, we had a call the other day was wondering why uh, she wasn't on the old radio show. So <laughs> she, uh, she does a great job. Her and Murph do a great job. Citizens Academy, I just wanted to mention that real quick. Um, the applications are due a week from today, Wednesday, February 24th. Um, this is a seven week course and the Academy leads discussions on important regional issues like transportation, economic vitality, housing, civic engagement, and, 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 and a lot more. Um, ultimately, you know, what, what it tries to do is help people become more, more civically engaged in, in, in the process and in, in local government. Um, these are, uh, of course, going to be virtual sessions on Thursdays between 6.30 and 8.30, beginning April 1st. Um, so we would, um, you know, we would hope and, and, and ask you to, if you have um, uh, constituents of yours that might be interested in, in such a program, that you, you ask them to apply online, and, um, and hopefully we can get them in the program. Also, um, I just wanted to draw your attention to our first workshop in a three-part series um, uh, centered around affordable housing. The, um, the first workshop is gonna be held on Thursday, February 25th from 10 o'clock to noon. And, and it will concentrate on financial tools, including an understanding of low-income tax credits, community development financial institutions, uh, gap financing, and opportunity zones. Um, you should have received an email from Flo Rotano and our staff about the event. But in the, in the event you can't locate it, please just reach out to Flo, Melinda, or myself, and we'll, uh, we'll get, you sign up, get you the sign up info. Um, this is more, this next item is more just of a, it's more of an FYI. The, uh, the National Science Foundation uh, recently awarded 52 teams of civic and academic partners from across the country um, uh, initial grants to refine ready to implement research-based pilot projects. Um, all the teams are now developing their detailed scopes and work plans for the next phase of the competition. Um, there are two teams that are pursuing projects in the Denver region and Dr. Cog is collaborating with both groups. The first group is uh, researchers from CU Denver and DU and uh, they are seeking to co-design and implement equitable and adaptive community oriented mo mobility solutions that build on regional investments in mobility as a service technology. The other group is out of the University of Pennsylvania and their project aims to develop tools and planning practice that uh, more formally integrates housing and transportation processes together. Um, uh, so they are proposing to pursue uh, projects in Denver, Cleveland and, and uh, Philadelphia. So all the teams are in this four month sprint now to finalize their, their proposals. Um, and we'll keep you posted if the any of the Denver-based uh, projects get funded. Um, they're year-long effort, and we're excited about the opportunity to partner um, with with either one of these these um, these uh, proposals. Earlier today, um, Melinda Stevens, you would have received a, an email from Melinda Stevens about an upcoming transportation conversation. It's um, it's gonna it's gonna be held on Monday, February twenty second, this coming Monday from two to three thirty p.m. Um, now this event has come together rather quickly, um, but we may wanted to make sure that you all were aware of it. So there's gonna be kind of two panel discussions as part of that 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 um, that event. Um, the first is a panel discussion with uh, some legislative leadership as well as some local government reps, and in particular two members that were. Um, were or are uh, Dr. Cog board members. Uh, Mayor Jackie Malay from Lone Tree will be on that panel and Adams County Commissioner Lynn Baca will, um, will also be on that panel. So we'll, we'll be tuning in to, uh, to, to have a listen. Um, the other is, is a question and answer session with Governor Polis and CDOT Director Shoshana Liu and that'll be facilitated by the President of the Senate, Leroy Garcia. So if you're able to attend next, uh, this coming Monday at two o'clock, I uh, would encourage you to do so. I, I have reached out and to make to see if um, if the event will be recorded, and it sounds like it will be. So hopefully, for those that can attend, we'll we'll get a copy of that link and we'll be able to share it with everyone. And lastly, Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to take a moment to recognize you uh, for uh, since this is your last meeting as chair. Um, and as you know, it's been a been a crazy year, and I just want to thank you, sir, for your your counsel and steady hand as we navigated some uncharted waters to say the least. 
Um, I've always felt comfortable sort of picking up the phone and, and giving you a shout. And if I had a question about anything and, and, um, and I know we shared a good laugh or two along the way, sir. So thank you so much for your service to Dr. Cog. We, we, uh, we're truly blessed to have you as chair. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, that's my report. Thank you, Dr. Rex. I uh, appreciate the kind words. I'll, I'll have a, a few parting comments and the other, other matters at the very end of our uh, agenda. So um, with that, uh, the next item is public comment. Up to 45 minutes is allocated now for public comment, and each speaker will be limited to three minutes. If there are additional requests from the public to address the board, time will be allocated at the end of the meeting to complete public comment. The chair requests that there be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before this board. Consent and action items will begin immediately after the last speaker. Um, I, I do see um, I do see a Mr. Loeb, um, uh, Ms. Stevens. I will uh, allow, um, let me take a look here, and see if I can get to Mr. Loeb. And uh, I believe Mr. Loeb, you you are um, your mic is live. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Randall Loeb. I'm a citizen in Denver. I've been involved with Dr. Cog forever. I'm 70 years old. I live in Protective Action, which is a program of master leasing of hotels. You mentioned one of the places that we're out of. Um, and we um, are grateful to the collaboration of the entire community uh, to make it possible for people who are at risk um, to be safe. I've had both of my uh, inoculations with Moderna uh, and I am looking forward to working over at the uh, airport in doing CDC cleaning with Bayot Enterprises uh, starting next week. Uh, but uh, when we close these programs down, which we have to, uh, there is the nagging issue which has been brought front and center and you mentioned it in part in talking about housing of where do people live. Uh, ordinary average individuals, people my age, people who are younger, uh, families, single women with children, uh, people who are not necessarily able to be uh, sustained in the ways in which uh, we conventionally think of leases and so forth. There's been a lot of static between government officials at every level regarding how do we create opportunities for people to, to earn a living wage and live in some place that is secure where they are not at risk of being evicted for some reason or even having the opportunity to live somewhere uh, because of different um, onerous uh, requirements. We need to streamline how we look at this. Um, I work a lot in the transportation part of Dr. Cog. I have for years and years, I was a part of the Citizen Academy. I believe that the structure, the infrastructure of government and housing have got to be aligned, amalgamated, uh, made it po make it possible for people um, to live from birth to death and have a chance to be able to die with dignity. Uh, and if I was able to join that talk show, I would point those things out in spades. Uh, we have a problem though um, at the moment because of the fact that so many people um, are on a divided, a divisive uh, point of view about each other. And as I always talk about the Honorable um, John Kefalis, who's a commissioner and, and head of the Health and Human Services at the moment, um, we really need to have common decency and a sense that we basically are working together to come up with solutions. And I also call out in that note, every ever level of government, including the governor and his administration to work together with the um, advocates and the people at the, in the social service sector to try to find solutions to problems instead of pointing fingers. It's one of my bellwether uh, issues. And I, go, I guess if I wanted it on my tombstone and I would say that I wanted us to collaborate and work as a team to solve problems. Thank you for allowing me to address you. And as always, I really deeply appreciate your service. Thank you, Mr. Loeb. Is there anybody else for public comment? Please raise your virtual hand or press star nine on the phone. 
I will pause for a minute and uh, wait a few seconds. Let's see. Seeing no one else, I will close public comment at 6.55 and move on to the next section of the uh, agenda. It is the consent agenda. <clears throat> if there is anybody who would like to pull uh, an item off, please feel free to raise your virtual hand or press star nine. If not, I am looking for a motion and a second to uh, for approval of the consent agenda. Uh, so moved, Mr. Chairman. I have, uh, I have uh, Director Atchison who has made a motion. Director Peck, uh, I see your hand up as well. A second the motion. Great, uh, with, with a motion and a second, um, we are going to ask you to uh, unmute so we can take a voice vote. Looks like we are unmuted. Um, okay, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. Abstain. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, we go on to the action item section of our agenda. Uh, item eight, election of officers. Uh, I, will, I will read the preamble, which um, ties to item eight as well as item nine. Pursuant to the articles of, the articles of association, the election of officers occurs at the February meeting. The nominating committee report is attached. Nominations can be made from the floor, provided the consent of the nominee is obtained in advance. If nominations are made from the floor, voting will be done by secret ballot. And with that, I am, I am told that the spokesperson for the nominating committee is Director Atchison. I'll turn it over to you, Director Atchison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd like to ask that uh, we recognize all of those who applied. Uh, we had a, a number of people who applied for positions on the executive committee. We appreciate the fact that they took the time to fill it out and were interested. At this time, on behalf of the nominating committee, we have the following nominations to put forth to the board. The chair, Mr. John Dyack, will move to the position of past chair. Current vice chair, Ashley Stoltzman, would move to the chair. We recommend the approval of Mr. Kevin Flynn from Denver as the vice chair, Mr. Steve Conklin from Edgewater as the secretary, and Ms. Wynn Shaw from Long Tree as the treasurer. This is the recommendation and unanimous recommendation of the nominating committee, sir. Thank you, Director Atchison. Um, I, I will turn it over to the board members if there are questions or comments, or there is a motion on this recommendation please feel free to raise your virtual hand or press star nine if you're on the phone. I see Director Pfeiffer, his hand is up first. Since this is my last time on the executive committee, I thought it should be um, ceremonial for me to make the motion to approve the slate of officers as presented by Director Atchison. Thank you, Director Pfeiffer. I see uh, the second hand up is Director Maurer. Director Maurer, thanks. Second that. All right, uh, with a motion and a second on the floor, I will ask uh, the directors to unmute so we can take a voice vote. All, right. all, right. um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Against, abstain. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone, and congratulations to the new executive committee member, Director Shaw, and um, and the promotions for uh, Director Conklin, Director Flynn, and now Chair Stoltzman. So um, I've I've talked to everyone except uh, Director Shaw. They 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 expressed their, their gratitude uh, to everyone. Ask that we move to the next item. So with that, the next item, uh, item nine. Discussion of appointments, the performance and engagement and finance and budget committees. Uh, again, I will turn it over to Director Atchison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to the uh, committee assignments, uh, as everyone is aware, we have uh, two major committees, both finance and budget and performance and engagement. Each of those two committees is, is chaired by one of the current uh, executive board members. In the finance and budget, the incoming treasurer Ms. Shaw will uh, chair the finance and budget, and Mr. Conklin will chair the 
performance engagement. After a thorough review of all those who applied, uh, there is a uh, explanation in the packet, but here is the recommendations for the two committees for 2021. For finance and budget, directors Bob Pfeiffer, Jeff Baker, Jessica Sandrin, Jim Dale, Nicholas Williams, Tracy Kraft Tharp, Claire Levy, George Teal, Neil Shaw, James Comerley, Deborah Mulvey, Allison Coombs, and Ashley Stoltzman. For performance and engagement, the chair being Steve Conklin, the following members, Bud Starker, Eva Henry, George Lamps, Jason Gray, Jacob Lebeer, Randy Wheel, William Lindstedt, John Dyack, Kevin Flynn, Herb Atchison, Aaron Brockett, Joan Peck, and as an alternate, Ashley Stoltzman. In the case of the two recommendations, the chair serves at the pleasure of her on both committees. Thank you very much, Director Atchison. Uh, <clears throat> with the recommendations brought before us, I will turn it over to the board. If, if the board has any questions or comments uh, on this or would like to um, 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 create uh, a, a nomination by the floor, please feel free to raise your virtual hand or press star nine. At this time, I see Director Maurer's hand up. That may be a hangover from the last item, but I will turn it over to Director Maurer. I didn't have anything to say. I just, my hand was left up. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Director Dale, your hand is up. Yes, I move approval slate for finance and budget and performance engagement committees. Thank you, Director Dale. Uh, I am looking for a second to Director Dale's motion. Let's see, uh, Director Wheel. Second. Thank you, Director Wheel. With a motion and a second, I would ask the board members to unmute so we can take a voice vote, please. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I might, before we take the vote, uh, we have had a replacement of the recommended member on the performance engagement from Adams County. She's been replaced by Steve Odoricio. Okay, so Lynn Baca. So her name was put forward because she applied at, during the time that we were taking applications. Uh, so, uh, I'm, uh, so the director Addison, uh, Mr. Odoricio is, is the, uh, is the member, uh, we're replacing Mr. Odoricio or, uh, Ms. Henry with Odoricio. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. If, if I may, uh, this is Doug, I just, just to explain this a little bit, cause it's, cause it is, it is different. Um, so, so the appointments to either committee is a two year term. And uh, Commissioner Eva Henry, she had a year remaining on her P&E term. Um, so automatically, um, Commissioner Odoricio becomes the member of, of P&E. He serves out the remainder of her term. Okay. And, uh, Welcome, Steve. <laughs> and Thank, Mr. thank Odoricio, you. Um, uh, uh, Director Ashton, uh, Mr. Odoricio is, is on that list, or is that a replacement? It will be, he will be replacing Eva Henry's name on that list because he's taking her place for the remainder of her term. I just want to make sure people don't think that Eva's still here. Oh, okay, so was, was, was Eva on, on that list that you presented to us? Yes, she was. Thank you. So what I'm going to ask is, uh, Director Dale, uh, do you accept a friendly amendment to replace Director Henry with Director Odoricio? I accept friendly amendment. Thank you. And uh, Director Wheel, do you uh, second that uh, friendly amendment? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Uh, with um, with the um, uh, motion and second, again, asking everyone to unmute. Looks like we're good. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Motion carries unanimously. Again, thank you very much, Director Atchison, as well as the, the remaining members of the nominating committee. We truly appreciate your service and consideration of all, um, all applicants in, in this endeavor. Thank you so much. And, um, with that, um, we will go to item 10, discussion of an amendment to the Articles uh, of Association. Uh, pursuant to the Articles of Association, an affirmative vote of a majority of member representatives shall be required to amend the articles. 
Um, the number I have is we need to reach 28 uh, affirmative votes in order to change this um, uh, change this this item. And um, at this point in time, I will I will turn it over to Ms. Doc, please. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate the time. Um, it's good to see you all this evening. Uh, so what I'm asking for tonight is your approval to amend Dr. Cobb's Articles of Associations to reflect a new budget cycle and fiscal year. Uh, currently, Dr. Cobb operates on a calendar fiscal year. And over time, more and more of our programs are being funded on the state fiscal year, which runs from July through June. So over the years, it's become increasingly difficult for us to accurately budget and forecast and also makes auditings, audits a little bit more difficult also because we have so many of our programs that are actually on that state year. So that's two um, state contracts that will overlap in one calendar year and it's just caused a lot of difficulty. So actually in 2020, about 65% of our funding came on that state cycle. So what we're requesting is to go ahead and uh, change Dr. Cog's fiscal year to align with the states. And we think that's just gonna give us a lot uh, better visibility to our financial um, status and also help us in our budgeting process, our audits. I did reach out to our auditing firm, Clifton Larson Allen, uh, to seek their guidance on this and also our attorneys. And there really aren't any roadblocks that present a, or that, that would prevent us from doing this. So, um, so at this point, we just think it makes a lot of financial sense to make this change. Interestingly enough, our articles don't state what the fiscal year for Dr. Cog is, but it does state what the budget cycle is. Mm -hmm. So we need to make an amendment to the articles so that our budget can align with the change in our fiscal year. Currently, our budget goes to FMB um, in October, and then they recommend to the board for approval in November. And what we are going to amend that the articles to now state is that um, the budget will go to FMB in April, and they will recommend to the board for approval in May. So I am happy to take any questions, but I can tell you that myself and my team are really excited about this. <laughs> we just think it's really a smart move uh, for Dr. Cog. Um, there are other MPOs around the country that also do this and, and have aligned their years with the state as well. So we're excited about it. And again, I'm happy to take any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Ms. Doc. Um, uh, board members, uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to raise your virtual hand or press star nine if you are on the phone. I will pause and see if there are any questions or comments on this matter. Mm. Seeing, seeing none, uh, we are going to take a roll call uh, vote on this. Um, the roll call vote, we, we encourage or ask the board members when they get to their name to put their cameras on on the advice of council uh, when they vote. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Stevens, uh, please. Point, point of order, Mr. Chairman, I just might have missed it. Did we have a motion on approving the articles? Whoa, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair Stoltzman. I am, so, I'll, I'll, I'll move we amend the articles of association as proposed. Thank you I'll very second. Much. Yep. And we have a motion and a second. Um, with that, again, uh, we will go to a roll, roll call vote. Um, everything I said previous to Chair Stoltzman's point of order um, is still intact. I will turn over to Ms. Stevens, please. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, so everyone obviously please be, be prepared to unmute yourself uh, and state whether you are for or against the motion stated. Uh, and we are gonna do it just like we did roll and uh, I will be calling everyone. So please just be ready. Okay, so we will start with Aaron Brockett. Four. Adam Cushing. Chris Giordanelli. Allison Coombs. Four. Ashley Stoltman. Four. Bill Gipp. Four. Bob Pfeiffer. Uh, four. Bud Starker. Four. 
Claire Levy? Four. Colleen Whitlow? David Adams? David Spellman? Deborah Mulvey? Four. Don Cognac? David Whelan? George Lance? Dave Kerber? Four. George Teal? Four. Herb Atchison? Four. Jacob LeBure? Dana Gutwein? Four. Jim Dale? I'm. James Carley? Four. Jason Gray? Tim Dietz? Jeff Baker? Four. Jessica Sandgren? Julia Marvin? Four. Joan Peck? Four. Josie Cockrell? Lisa Jones? Julie Duran Mullica? Joyce Downing? Kara Tanucci? Four. Karina Elrod? Pamela Grove? Catherine Whitman? Four. Kevin Flynn? Four. Christopher Larson? Larry Vidham? Four. Linda Montoya? Celeste Arner? Linda Olson? Four. Lynette Kelsey? I apologize to the group. I had trouble finding the raise hand. Um, I had one minor edit at the very end of the articles where it lists the, the various amendments. This amendment has the wrong year listed just to make sure that gets edited. Otherwise I am for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We will absolutely note that. I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Okay, uh, Margot Ramsden? Four. Michael Hillman? Neil Shaw? Four. Nicholas Angelo? Holly Rogan? Nicholas Williams? Four. Nicole Frank? Four. Paul Sutton? Sean Foray? Rachel Binkley? Four. Randy Wheel? Four. Randy Wheelock? Four. Ronald Angles? Roy Palmer? Gail Christie? Sally Daigle? Four. Stephanie Walton? Four. Steve Odoricio? Four. Stephen Conklin? Four. Tammy Mauer? Four. Tracy Kraft Tharp? Four. William Lindstedt? Four. Wynne Shaw? Four. Okay, and I just want to double check and make sure in case anyone wasn't able to unmute themselves in time. Are there any directors who are not able to unmute themselves? If you could raise your hand now so we can take your vote. Okay. Um, I am not seeing any hands raised. And with that, Mr. Chair, I will let you know that we have one moment, please let me tally. Okay, we had 38 in favor and zero against, and I will hand it back to you. Thank you very much, Ms. Stevens. With, with 38 affirmative votes, we need 28 to successfully pass this, this amendment to the Articles of Association, so it has passed. Thank you, everyone. Uh, the next item, item 11, uh, 
discussion on a draft 2021 policy statement on state legislative issues. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for being out of order several times now. There, there's a, a member in the attendee list on the phone with their hand raised. And I just wondered if they were raising their hand in response to Melinda's, if that is a director that's called in by phone. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair Stoltzman. Uh, we have a phone uh, participant um, that is the last three digits are 928. Um, if you press star nine, you can, you can identify yourself and identify. Uh, uh, apologies, Mr. Chair. Uh, in order for them to unmute themselves, they do need to hit star six. Star nine was to raise their hand, so that's great. <laughs> so they just need to hit star six to speak. My apologies. I, I believe we can hear you, whoever's at 928, if you want to let us know who you are. All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Chair. No, that's okay. Thank you very much, Chair Stoltzman. It's a team effort here, Dr. Cog. Um, all right. Um, we, will, we will return to the um, agenda, Mr. Morrow. Item 11, discussion of draft 2021 policy statement on state legislative issues. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think as you all know that uh, Colorado's General Assembly convened or reconvened uh, yesterday um, there uh, to hopefully complete the, their legislative session. And uh, we wanna give you a, a quick update uh, before we move into the state and federal legislative policy statements. Um, so uh, I'm going to first turn it over uh, to, and, and in some cases, introduce some of you to Dr. Cog's contract lobbyists, uh, Ed Bowditch and Jennifer Castle, uh, to give, uh, like I said, a quick uh, preview and overview of what we expect for this legislative session, and then I'll come back after they're done. So Ed and Jan, if you wanna take it over, which one of you is gonna start? Ed sure. is gonna start. Thank you, Rich. Um, I'll start first. My name is Ed Bowditch. And again, we appreciate the opportunity to represent Denver Regional Council of Governments. Um, as most people probably know, the legislature started up again um, yesterday and, and they had the one month break from the January few days when they were in session. But now they started yesterday and they intend to complete the session by late May, um, by the Memorial Day weekend. That's the goal at least, um, adjourning prior to June. The uh, two big budget items that we're waiting on, one is are we going to get any additional federal um, funds, federal stimulus funds, federal COVID funds? Um, those could have a significant impact on the allocation of revenues so everybody at the Capitol is watching that very carefully. Um, in addition, just here in Colorado, the state's budget will be defined by the March 20th revenue forecasts. The December forecasts were really quite positive, much higher than people had anticipated. Um, it seems the, a lot of the taxpayers, especially in the upper income tax brackets had been largely unaffected by the COVID economic slowdown. So the tax revenues were really coming in above projections according to the December revenue estimates. Now, those can change. They're very hard to predict, um, but we will wait and see what happens on the March 20th forecast. With that, I will turn it over to Jennifer for some additional updates. Yes, thank you, Ed. Thank you, Rich. Nice to see some of you. Good to meet um, some of you as well too. My name is Jennifer Castle. So just to follow up a little bit to what Ed said, uh, we've seen 202 bills so far that have been introduced, um, quite, a, quite a large number, and there's going to be more coming this week. So we're kind of chucking our way through those bills. The two main issues or major issues that we're going to be watching this year, um, one is the big transportation uh, package or plan that we know is going to come. Um, we imagine that we'll see that maybe a little bit later tour, later in the, in the end of session. Um, and then the other one is the uh, revolving around the state budget. 
and are trying to restore the cuts um, that we took last year to the senior services line item in the budget. So those are the two big things that we're going to be watching for. Of course, in addition, we expect that we will see some legislation introduced um, that has that relates to at-risk adults, senior issues, renters' rights. Um, we do know there's going to be an RTD bill coming and perhaps some other transportation related bills as well too. So uh, we certainly look forward to discussing legislation with you um, as we move, move on in the legislative session. So thank you. Thanks, Dan and Ed, appreciate it. And let me also mention that starting uh, next month's board meeting, as we do every session, we will present uh, on the agenda, on the board agenda, uh, a, a list or matrix actually of uh, bills with uh, usually with staff recommendation on sometimes asking board direction on possible positions to take. Uh, since we're only two days into the session, we don't have anything to bring to you tonight, uh, but we certainly anticipate having several bills uh, a month from now. So uh, those will go out in the regular agenda, you know, a week before the meeting. And if there's any bills that get introduced after the agenda goes out, we'll, we uh, have a policy of getting those to you at least 48 hours before the, the board meeting. So uh, be on the lookout for those. So that would take us to the actual uh, board action items. Um, again, every year we um, present these to the board for um, approval. We typically, staff works to uh, typically update some language uh, and uh, in, as appropriate, uh, revise and, or even add some, some new policies. And we present those to the board uh, as we did last January uh, for review to solicit comments. And then we come back the, the following month, which is month, which is today, uh, to ask for your approval. Uh, we did not receive any comments on the state policy statement. We received one additional comment on the federal policy statement, uh, which is noted in uh, the uh, um, memo for attachment J, which has the federal policy. Um, so with that, um, in the interest of time, I can, I can give some summary of what those are. There aren't any real, if you want, uh, there aren't any real substantive change. Most of it is uh, some cleanup language to clarify policy. Uh, some of it is to update language to reflect law changes, such as in the federal policy statement, uh, the Older Americans Act was actually reauthorized last year in the middle of the pandemic. We were happy to see that. Um, and so we have modified the uh, language in the federal statement to reflect that. Um, but we have, I think the, the first item is, uh, is attachment I. And so maybe I'll first see if there's any comments or questions on that otherwise entertain uh, a motion for approval. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Um, directors, uh, if there are any questions on the policy statement on state legislative issues, please feel free to raise your hand. We have Director Levy. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to clarify, so the changes are in red uh, in the yes. using track, okay. So the, yeah. the bolded, the bolded language is existing language that you're just um, Correct. Yeah. Okay. Typically what we do in the statement is bold the language that is like actually the actual wording of the policy. So okay, that, thank you. that is yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and sorry, I just wanted to say nice to see you, Rich. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> before I mute myself again. Yeah. Director Rich. Thank you, sir, very much. Um, uh, Director Levy, I, um, let me also point out that this is just primarily just the, the the draft language itself. So we'll pretty this up, and we and we'll 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 we'll, we'll give you guys the final uh, uh, copy once it goes through creative and all that kind of good stuff. So I just want you to know this is not what we present to, to the legislature. <laughs> good clarification, Doug. Thanks. <laughs> and, um, any additional questions or comments on this item, uh, directors? Please feel free to raise your virtual hand or press. Star nine. C 
seeing um, seeing no additional uh, hands being raised, I will entertain a motion. I have Director Teal is the first hand. Thank you, Chairman. I like the red lines. That's my statement. Otherwise, I'd like to move to approve the 2021 policy statement on state legislative issues. Thank you, Director Teal. Uh, uh, I guess Director Saul, the, the next hand. Was second. Raised. Uh, thank you. We have a uh, motion and a second. I will ask the board members to unmute so we can take a voice vote. <laughs> all right. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. Stain. Motion carries on. Thank you, everyone. All right, the next item. Uh, the next item is item 12, discussion of the draft 2021 policy statement on federal le legislative issues. Mr. Morrow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I mentioned, um, we do both state and federal policies every year. And I probably should have also clarified that um, these policies help give direction to uh, obviously the board. It's the board's direction though to the Dr. Cog staff and our, and our lobbyists. We also have a federal contract lobbyist, uh, Mickey Farrell, who works for us. And so uh, I'll entertain if there's any comments or questions on, on the fe federal policy, otherwise uh, entertain a vote or a, a motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morrow. Uh, board members, if there's any questions or comments on this matter, feel free to raise your virtual hand or press star nine. Seeing no questions or comments, I am open to entertaining a motion. Uh, Director Peck. Thank you. Uh, I move to approve the 2021 uh, Federal Le Legislative Action Desk proposed. Thank you very much, Director Peck, Director Daniel. Uh, you, you are the next hand raised. And I will second that motion. Thank you very much. We have a motion and we have a second. So please unmute. You can take a voice vote. Right. All right. All those in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Staying? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Morrow. Thank you. See you next month. All right. Um, the next section of the agenda, informational briefings. Item 13, Advanced Mobility Partnership Annual Update. Ms. Lindsay, please. Good evening, everyone. Let me just share my screen with you. All right. Everybody can see my screen? Wonderful. I'm Emily Lindsay. I'm the Transportation Technology Strategist at Dr. Cog in our Transportation Planning and Operations Division. And I'm going to give you a quick update on what we have accomplished with the Advanced Mobility Partnership over the last year and where we're headed. So just to give folks a quick overview in case um, you're unfamiliar with the Advanced Mobility Partnership or the AMP, as you might also hear, um, this really stemmed from the Mobility Choice Blueprint planning process. Um, or the actual mobility choice blueprint itself, which was the final product, which was a collaborative effort between several partner agencies in the region, including CDOT, Dr. Cog, RTD, and the Denver Metro Chamber. This really looked at technology and transportation um, in a way that was a little bit more inclusive and tried to figure out the nexus between some of our quality of life, technology, mobility, access needs, moving forward and how we address transportation technology and deployments in the region. So again, just to emphasize that this was really a holistic uh, approach to looking at transportation technology. This wasn't about a single aspect. It was really thinking through how transportation technology can be deployed in the Denver region um, and really support all of those outcomes identified in Metro Vision. And you can see some similarities, of course, uh, but I just wanted to highlight some of the objectives that are presented in Metro in the Mobility Choice Blueprint. These include regional collaboration, uh, system opt optimization, shared mobility, data security and sharing, mobility electrification, driverless vehicle preparation, and new transportation funding. So a lot of different topics that 
uh, kind of hit a bunch of different policy areas. And so, as you all know, once we have a plan, we need a little bit of a boost to help implement the plan. Um, and so since Mobility Choice Blueprint was kind of that collaborative integrated approach, we really wanted to carry that partnership model uh, through the implementation of some of the tactical actions identified in that plan. And so in late 2019, the Advanced Mobility Partnership was formed again with these same partner agencies um, with the goal to kind of implement Mobility Choice Blueprint and be a forum for transportation technology conversation and implementation in the region. And there are two different kind of facets of the AMP, um, and I'll describe those to you. Uh, they are the AMP Working Group, which meets every month. These are practitioner level folks from our partner agencies, from our local governments, um, and even some public, private, and nonprofit sector partners as well. Um, and then there is an AMP Executive Committee, which is made up of executive leadership from those partner agencies. So again, CDOT, Dr. Cog, RTD, and the Denver Metro Chamber. Um, and they really are responsible for kind of leading the policy priority conversations and forwarding on any relevant information to the kind of an applicable bodies. As you know, all these agencies do a lot of different work in a lot of different um, sectors of the transportation industry. So we wanted to make sure that the partnership approach was consistent with the governance structure. And so I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what we have accomplished. Uh, 2020 was our first full calendar year, uh, a wild one at that. And so we got off to um, the start of the year, identifying different stakeholders, conducting some initial outreach and engagement. Um, again, these are with our, our kind of typical transportation partners and really reaching out to others that might be interested. We have university partnerships. Um, we've been working with a variety of local governments. You can see those in that right-hand column. Um, and then some public and private sector partners uh, just a few are listed here. There's a lot more, um, but these folks really bring a kind of multi-agency, multi-jurisdictional perspective to that AMP working group. We did also build a website to kind of promote our presence um, in this space. Again, this is the Advanced Mobility Partnership uh, website is advancedmobilitypartnership.org. If you haven't checked it out yet, uh, this is a great place to find some resources. Um, information about our meetings um, and all of that good stuff. We really wanted to emphasize again this idea that this is a partnership. <laughs> the brand identity is really distinct and that it doesn't replicate any of the partner agencies um, existing kind of look and feel. So this is uh, our home for on the web for the AMP. And earlier this or I guess not this year in 2020 <laughs> we prioritized over 30 different tactical actions that came out of Mobility Choice Blueprint. Um, again, these were in all different focus areas um, and they are all very different from one another, uh, but we knew we needed to identify some of those foundational items um, that would set us up for success in implementing other elements of the plan. And so these are the three main focus areas that were identified. And I'll just give you a quick overview of some of the tactical actions that were prioritized. So we have shared mobility, which includes things like universal trip planning and payment app development, curbside management, mobility hubs. Uh, we also have a focus area for system operations, which deals with a bunch of, of very different things um, from transit priority to smart traffic control technology to integrated corridor management and coordination of traffic management center systems and operations. And then our third focus area is on data and data sharing. I feel like this is probably pretty foundational to a lot of those other tactical actions that um, we just went through. This includes things like establishing a regional mobility data platform and thinking through the data governance side on um, data sharing requirements um, in our right of way. So in order to guide some of the work in these very different spaces, we established three different steering committees, um, one for each one of those different shapes um, and we assembled subject matter experts that would help us identify next steps to further action for each of these. And so over the summer we worked with those different steering committees to develop work plans and next steps we went through a very similar process in all of those um, focus areas. We, we really wanted to develop something that was actionable and achievable. Uh, so we followed a pretty methodical process. 
And we wanted to obviously confirm our priorities with that kind of larger stakeholder group um, and with the AMP executive committee. So this fall, we presented all that synthesized information um, to those folks who said, yes, you're going in the right direction. <laughs> um, and we certainly realized that a lot of the initial activities associated with these, these kind of priority tactical actions are on the planning and visioning side. So uh, these some of these can be fit into existing work plans and others might require some joint investment. So since fall, we've been initiating some work on tactical actions. I would say there's been a lot of different things happening in each of those three different focus areas. And the working group itself, that, that monthly group that meets, um, really also serves as kind of a forum for coordination. So we've also included some briefings, some conversations some discussions around different transportation technology deployments in our region. Um, and just to give you a flavor for the kinds of things we've talked through, um, I put a little bulleted list here. Again, it really ranges depending on um, what's happening, but uh, things like electrification, shared micromobility, emerging MOS strategies, all kinds of good stuff. And so I know that was a super quick overview, but I just wanted to give you a taste for what we've been working on with our partner agencies and thank um, you all and your staffs for participating. And I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Lindsay. Uh, board members, um, please raise your virtual hand or press star nine if there are any questions. Seeing none, I will thank Ms. Lindsay. Thank you very much for your informational report out. We appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is item 14, committee reports. The first committee report is from the State Transportation Advisory Committee, Chair Stolzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the stack met and we discussed the fiscal year 2022 yeah. annual budget allocation plan from CDOT. Uh, there's a gap. Um, the deficit is about $8.4 million. And so CDOT presented three options. Two of them are very, very similar to close the gap. Um, and they range from deferring maintenance and using uh, some reserve funding and using some additional COVID funding. Nothing um, took it all away from one area. It was all pretty well spread. And so the stack didn't feel overly um, committed to any of the three options. They all looked reasonably acceptable and just forwarded it to the Transportation Commission to consider and decide. <laughs> um, we also got a recap of Senate Bill 267 and discussed where we are on that. So the Colorado Department of Transportation really tries to ensure that the funding is spent exactly as intended and what was agreed upon as an equitable formula at the time. So they were talking about how, you know, in any one year, there's not parity or equity to what we need to do, but over a four year period, there will be. Um, the only caveat there was that with the stimulus funding, rather than say, if, a, if an area was maybe ahead or behind where they should be, they should be, um, penalized for stimulus. So what was done was the stimulus money was allocated on exactly what the equity formula was calculated to be so that everyone got something from the stimulus. Uh, but we still will meet those equity targets in the end for um, SB 267. And we also got an uh, intro on this greenhouse gas roadmap update and the Dr. Cog board will get more information on that throughout the year. So we've all heard about some of the targets and some of the need that we, we really have to contribute to in the transportation sector. So more will be coming for us, but this was really an intro to say CDOT's still gathering information and wants to be a partner with us and others to figure out how we can meet these aggressive goals. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Chair Stolzman. Uh, the next report out is of Metro Mayor's Caucus, Director Atchison. Metro Mayor's Caucus meets tomorrow, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Director Atchison. Uh, the next report is from the Metro Area County Commissioners, uh, Director Baker. I don't know if we've lost Director Baker. Is there anyone who, who attended the Metro Area County Commissioner who would like to report out? I, I'm here. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Director Baker. My apologies. I, I, I put on my video instead of the mute. <laughs> we will be meeting on Friday 
and uh, we will be hearing from Jill um, Ryan, I'm sorry, the director of CDPHE about vaccinations and we'll be asking her some very um, pointed questions. Thank you very much, Director Baker. Uh, the next uh, report is from the Advisory Committee on Aging, uh, Ms. Sanchez Warren. Mr. Chairman, this is Doug. I, I don't know if Jayla is. Um, yeah, I am on. You there? There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, I, it's wonderful to see you all. I don't have a report, though, because we meet on Friday. Thank you very much, Ms. Sanchez Warren. Uh, the next report is from the Regional Air Quality Council, Executive Director Rex. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at our Friday, February 5th meeting, a uh, few items. One, uh, Director and Chair Stolzman, um, uh, we had the same presentation on the Transportation Greenhouse Gas Advisory Group um, by CDOT staff. It was, it was well received. Um, we had a presentation from, uh, from RAC Director Mike Silverstein on um, a possible rule associated with employer-based trip reduction. Um, it's proposed a mandatory rule for, for businesses over 250 employees to, um, to comply with a, with a rule associated with providing um, uh, various options to, to, to their employees um, to, to reduce um, uh, single occupancy vehicle and BMT. So stay tuned on that. We'll be hearing a lot more about that through, through, through the uh, next few months. And Mr. Chairman, that's my report. Thank you very much. The next report is from the E-470 Authority. That is me. Uh, we had a, uh, a board meeting on February 11th. Uh, we reviewed the 2020 year-end financial results, um, a fairly challenging year for E-470. Revenues were down 34%. Traffic count um, is right about year-end at 2012 levels. Um, so with that, we, we had to dip into our uh, savings account to, um, to ensure that we could maintain our, our financial goals and metrics. Uh, we also had a 2020 annual customer survey experience. Uh, seems people like to use E470 because it saves time. They believe it's well maintained and they, they feel safe. So with that, I will end my reports. Um, the next report out is from CDOT, uh, Director White. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, as usual, the uh, excellent report out on the stack meeting is, is a good summary of, of what's before the department right now. So I thank Director Stoltzman for that summary. I'll just add a couple notes. Uh, we are um, also preparing for a third issuance of Senate Bill 267. And so in addition to sort of looking back on, on what we've accomplished over the last two years and, and checking on equity, we're starting to get ready for that. And right now that list includes two major projects in the Dr. Cog area, including the delivery of the I-270 and Floyd Hill improvements. So lots more to come on that in the next couple months as we look forward to that issuance. Uh, and then the other item I'll bring up just to, I guess, end on a, lo a little bit of a sad note, but um, this is the time of year when we're able to look back at the statistics from the year prior. And unfortunately we did see an increase in the number of fatalities in Colorado in 2020, despite the fact that VMT was down uh, quite a bit in some cases. So our transportation commission spent um, a long time during their meeting today talking about uh, how we can further improve our, our effort towards Vision Zero. Um, but it's a, a sad trend we're seeing and a lot of it, I think, due to some high speed incidents. I will leave it there tonight. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Director White. Um, the next report, report on fast tracks. I was informed that there is no report on, on this. Uh, moving to the next section, informational items. They are in the packet. Please feel free to review at your leisure. Uh, the next and last section is administrative items. The next meeting is February 17th. Uh, item 18, other matters by members. Uh, Chair Stolzman, please. Thank you. So on, on behalf of the entire board, just really want to take some time to thank the current chair, uh, John Dyack, and our present past chair, Bob Pfeiffer. It's both of their last meeting in those roles. And of course, as we heard earlier, John's moving to present past chair and Bob will remain with us, but no longer in the executive committee. And 
hopefully, you know, the majority of folks here know them, but for folks who have joined um, since we've gone virtual, I feel so sad that they have um, had this virtual year because they are two of the most collaborative regional thinkers that we could ever have. So on one hand, you know, it's really disappointing that we didn't get to see them in their full glory. And on the other hand, with such challenge, challenges and obstacles, like they're really the perfect people to over, overcome the obstacles. So we gave them um, a, some parting gifts as we always do. Usually we get to exchange them at the board and everyone sees them, but what would be better in a COVID parting gift than of course, hand sanitizer and toilet paper because that has to be in everyone's gift bag this year. And then of course, um, just to drink away their sorrows, some locally made whiskey from Stranahan's because whiskey when you're sick will make you well and whiskey will make you sick when you're well. So we really do thank them for their service tremendously. And a little, a little something um, that I just uh, wanted to share with everyone about John in particular. So can everybody see this award on the screen? All right, so John has won the first and probably only ever Certificate of Excellence from the Dr. Cog board. Um, so this was put together because John actually accomplished many historical feats in his time as chairman. Hmm. Just by moving us to electronic meetings, John single-handedly eliminated over 50,000 vehicle miles traveled from board members and our staff and saved us a thousand hours of travel time. So that's pretty amazing. And if you think of the cost and the pollution associated with that, that's incredible. Um, and it, this regional group, you'll come to know if you don't already know that really the divided votes are not good outcomes, even when one side wins or the others. It means we haven't worked together to come to a solution that we can all agree on. Those are really the times when it's challenging on the board. And John was able to get us to 100% unanimous votes over the last year, which is every chairman's goal, but no one ever does it. And John was able to do it. And that's really something. So that is fantastic. He is the first ever Dr. Cog board chairman to facilitate a meeting from Parker, Colorado. So he can put that on his campaign materials that he got Dr. Cog moved basically to Parker. And last but not least, for those of us who have had to go through it, he saved every one of us 30 minutes a month waiting for everyone else to figure out how the machine works in the parking garage to get out. So thank you, John, for all you do. Um, your award is in your bag rolled up, but I just wanted to share it with everyone. And we, we really are very lucky to have had you as the chair. Thanks so much, John. Thank you for your words and your gifts and um, your, uh, your certificate. I, I appreciate it. Um, Executive Director Rex uh, strongly encouraged me to uh, say a few words. I'm, I am not a man of words. I'm a man of uh, spreadsheets. But uh, again, humbled to represent the Dr. Cog organization. Uh, Director Pfeiffer uh, sort of reminisced about uh, what was what makes what makes Dr. Cog important, and uh, it's the people. Uh, walking into the uh, the boardroom nine years ago, you look around and you see people who have an incredible knowledge of the region, and you have no idea how you're going to um, even obtain a fraction of that knowledge. But you lean on people, and uh, you lean on the Dr. Cog staff, Executive Director Rex. Um, um, he's, he's been invaluable. Uh, you have Melinda, Lisa, and Cam who helped facilitate this, this Zoom uh, and uh, go to meeting structure. I couldn't have done it without them. All the past chairs, I, I wrote them down. And, um, you know, we have three, um, three people that I serve with that um, I just sort of look back and remembrance. Um, uh, Paul Ryan from the city and county of Denver, he, he was here when I came on and um, everybody really looked up to him and um, his knowledge of the region. It seemed like he was a, he was a magnet for people to, um, to, to be attracted to. Uh, Commissioner Tom Hayden from Clear Creek, um, he, he sat right next to me. I think um, his, his last meeting, uh, he was two seats away from me and our, our very own Connie Garcia. And if you didn't get a chance to know Connie, um, she was an incredibly special person. And uh, with her, I, I couldn't honestly have, have been here and appreciated her words um, throughout the years and the encouragement of pushing the introvert John to continue along this, um, 
this, this regional and leadership path. So with that, um, thank you all. Uh, appreciate uh, you tolerating me for the last year. And um, with no other matters uh, before the board, we will adjourn at 7.50. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, John, very much. Thank appreciate you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for Thank great, you, John. great Thank job. Great job, John. Great job. Thanks, John. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much. Thanks, John. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much, John. You're the best. Hey, John. John Dyack. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.